Hello. So, uh, last Saturday I went to the North East Yarn Show, which was a brand new yarn show um, in the North East, up near Newcastle at the race course. Um, it was really, really good fun. I went with three friends, Ange um, and Diane. You will see them a fair bit in the video. Um, and yeah, I thought I would take you for a look around. However, I do need to point out, it was extremely busy and um, it was very, very difficult to get to some of the uh, stalls and people did keep crossing in front of me. So please be aware that it's a little bit, especially at the beginning, there was a lot where I just could not get in and it was like I was kind of filming from a distance because it was just really difficult. So please be aware of that. Um, it is a long video. There's a lot to show you. I hope you enjoy it. But yeah, it was lots of fun. Definitely recommend the North East Yarn Show. So I will see you at the other end where I will show you all the things that I bought. Enjoy. So we finally got in um, and we turned immediately left. It was full of yarn and not sheep. Um, and the first shop we went into was Fire and Fibre. The footage at the beginning of this video is really shaky and um, like just a bit, I don't know, I'm moving the camera a little bit too fast. I think I was getting bashed about a fair bit. It was really, really busy at this point. And um, yeah, the lady in the green jacket, bless her heart, she does keep walking in front of me. <laughs> Um, but this was fire and fibre, they kind of did a lot of um, looms and like weaving and things. Um, I didn't manage to get in there. I don't think we went back, but it's kind of, that's not really my thing anyway, so that's probably why. Um, and there were so many. This next shop was the Lace Knittery, which I think is just a, a shop that sells like lots of different bits and bobs. I had these lovely little notion pouches. Um, and then they sold lots of different people's yarns. Um, I noticed the Malabrigo Rasta down in the bottom. What I didn't notice, and I actually filmed, is they had hedgehog fibres, which I've never ever used and always wanted to. I didn't even squish that. I didn't notice it was there. So <laughs> we didn't go back. We then went to the Threshing Barn, which I've seen a few times. This is a shop. Um, they had some beautiful notebooks um, that were like felted. And then um, they do like lots of different tools and things, um, sock blockers, they've got crochet, um, amigurumi kits and swifts and things, pom pom makers, they just have like, if you need it, you go to the threshing barn type, type jobby. They did uh, stuff for spinning wheels and everything like that as well. Um, and then lots of lovely yeah, they did hand knitted socks as well. I think they had um, commercial yarn. I think that's opal. Um, I'm not 100%. I didn't pick any of it up. But they also had hand dyed. Um, I picked up some sparkle. Oh, there was uh, sock. Uh, what are they called? Sock blanks. I think they're sock blanks above me. There's the sparkle yarn that's their own. And then they had vats of um, fibre to spin, which was gorge. I did pick up a really gorgeous dark blue sparkly one. There it is, look, you can see it in that bin. I don't show you it very well, but I did pick it up and have a look at it, it was beautiful. <laughs> so that was the threshing barn. They do all sorts, so if you want to check them out. Um, we then moved around this corner to coastal colours. I didn't manage to get a good look at coastal colours purely because it was just packed. Um, we did look at this, what I'm pointing at, the lace weight um, sparkly yarn. Emma was saying that she'd never used sparkly yarn because she thought it would be itchy. So I was telling her that it's just the same as everything else. 
um, like it's the same as a merino, it doesn't feel itchy. And there was a beautiful shawl knitted up in this sparkly lace weight, sparkle yarn. Um, so she had a feel of that. But yeah, coastal, coastal colours. I don't know why we didn't come back to this one. This is the thing when you first go in, it's so overwhelming and you tend to like not go back sometimes. Oh, there's a little sock bunting hanging up. Yeah, it's kind of so overwhelming that you remember ones in the middle, but you don't remember the ones at the beginning as well. Like, so it's you sometimes forget to go back to them. I wouldn't have bought that yarn anyway because it's lace weight, and I just I cannot use lace weight. I do, but I just I'm not a massive fan of lace weight. Um, but there was stuff around this corner that I could not get to at this point. Um, it was just so busy there, so. Unless I wanted to elbow people out the way. Which I didn't. Um, that's me looking about. Going back over to this far corner of Coastal Colours. Um, they also sold fibres. And they did um, drop spindles. Needles. All that sort of stuff. Crochet sets felt there's the drop spindles and was looking at those because um the type of thing that she was looking for and they had different weights on the drop spindles fat quarters as well there was quite a bit of uh, fabric at this show actually i saw fabric a few times um then we had a look at the map diane kept bumping into people that she knew um, and we went over to the Crafty Bird. So she had some nice fade sets. And mini skein sets. I've seen Crafty Bird before um, at other yarn shows. But I've never ever bought from her, which I really don't know why. She has that cute pom-pom with the eyes. And she has these amazing handmade pom-poms. Which are beautiful and she has stunning yarn I don't know why I haven't bought from her before you can see nervous fiber peeking through there lucky dip which we didn't have a go of and I should have and then the bargain basket which Emma had a rummage through I think I promise the footage does get better I don't know why it's so shaky at the beginning Probably my adrenaline because I was excited to be there. <laughs> but what I like about Crafty Bird is she has a crochet and a knitted square hanging on most of the yarn so you can see what they look like knitted like in a stocking stitch and crocheted. You see them here more. Which is a really good idea because it is hard to tell when they're in this game sometimes. So she has some gorgeous colours and she has some really nice samples as well. And then we went round and had a look at her project bags. And then Emma said one of the funniest things I think I've ever heard at a yarn show. I sort of promised myself I wasn't going to buy any yarn. What, today? You Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. And you know when you I like your friends stuff going? I promised myself I'm not going to buy any yarn. Yeah, right. You're right, oh. <laughs> well, Good luck with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, do not buy yarn, do <laughs> you? I know, yeah. I'm not spending any money. I think you could see from our reaction what we thought of that idea. Um, we then went round the corner to Yarn Unique, the first one I could actually get into properly. Um, she has some stunning colours and sparkles and I was really drawn to some of these. But there were um, the Staycation collection were not of a base that I wanted, otherwise I would have been grabbing some of them sparkly ones. Um, but there was some absolutely beautiful yarns at Yarn Unique. I think Emma, uh, not Emma, Ange was interested in some rainbow packs that she had um, down at the bottom there. 
and but we'd promised we weren't supposed to buy anything on the first go round. So I don't think any of us bought anything here. There was a big I think I think Ange went back and got something, possibly. I can't quite remember. But um there was some definite like ooh 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 but we didn't actually get anything. We then went round to Tyne and Floyd, which is a new to me um shop. The lady was sitting there spinning. Um I don't properly remember this one, I'm not gonna lie. I, I tend to not not like the ones that are in crates like this because it's kind of like you have to rummage for the colour. I, I rather like I like them better when they're all like hanging up and you can see each colour separately. So I don't tend to go over to those ones as much when they're like that, which is much to my detriment because I must miss out on some beautiful yarn. But it's just I don't know. It's just my personal preference, I suppose. Um, we were then at Knitterish Designs, which is another new to me designer. She um, had this little tiny booth. She stepped out to let me in and um, she was selling a pattern. She did have some yarn at the back, which I didn't notice um, when I was filming. Sorry, it's really, really shaky. Um, yeah, I went in and had a look at her designs. So that was nice, because I've never really seen just a designer there. It's usually people that are selling yarn and everything, so that was quite unusual. Um, we then went to the wool mouse, which is... Oh, I think it's just wool mouse, which is actually a fairly local shop. It's definitely local to Ange. Um, and, yeah, this was where we made our first purchase. So Wool Mouse, he tends to have really good bargain baskets. Um, that's me and Emma looking at the pretty buttons. Um, they were like ceramic buttons, I think. And then, yeah, his bargain basket is there. You can already see people rummaging in it. It's a really deep, proper bargain basket. And it's where I got my first purchase, which you'll see at the end of the video. Um, he has his own yarn which is with this little rainbow heart label i can't remember what it's called love hand dyed i think um and then he just sells he's a shop so he sells like all the other bits and bobs that you need scissors and knickknacks and notions and there's other yarn too he sells um acrylic and things so this is us rummaging in the sales basket and i think all of us considering we weren't supposed to buy anything till our first go around I think all four of us bought something from this sales basket. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was just one of those sales baskets that you couldn't walk away from. And if I remember rightly, we went back to that sales basket about four times. And I think Emma bought maybe three times from there. Yeah. So then we went to Lucy Locketland. Could not get in. I did manage little bits and bobs. Lucy sells lots of colour work kits and little creature kits. She's got the infamous frog and toads there, the dot pebbles frog. Um, and she also sells like rabbits and lots of colour work socks and normal socks too. But um, she, yeah, hats and everything. She's like the colour work shop. She's a local shop too. Across from Lucy was Jaws Toes. Jaws Toes, I've seen them lots of times. Um, they sell like just felt stuff but it's like kits and you can do all sorts with them and it's they're really cool but I've never actually bought from them um, they're like you can just use the felt things as, as coasters if you want or you can like turn them into other things so there's like those circular ones there um, at the top of the pile is like a bag so someone's crocheted see how they've got like the holes all around the circle so someone's crocheted around the outside of one to make a prettier coaster and then that bag is like someone else picked that up not me so I couldn't really film it but um, yeah that's a bag with a coaster on the bottom that's being crocheted so it's kind of like a kind of a kit shop they did brilliant plant pots I wanted one of them but I didn't get one <laughs> um, yeah I couldn't get around the other side but they do purses and things like that and they were all waiting for me <laughs> we then went to Caithness Yarns or 
Caithness, he said. It can be Caithness or Caithness. He didn't care which way he pronounced it. Um, and that was all um, like cones and really rustic type yarns. I don't think he dies it or anything. It's just, I think there is sheep. I'm not 100%. I could be making all of this up. Then we went to Dina's Home of Craft. Um, Emma took a liking to a sock pattern. There was lots of patterns there. I'm not sure if they're all Dina's or if she gets someone to do them for her. Um, but Emma ended up getting that sock pattern. And then... Oh, dye your own yarn boxes. <gasps> yeah, so... Um, <laughs> Emma, Emma, Emma really wants to dye her own yarn. I think she has a couple of kits at home, but she just, she's never used it yet. So yeah, that was, uh, that was quite funny. Um, so Dina did lots of stitch markers and um, needles and everything. Um, that's Dina knitting on the left hand side. She had some gorgeous yarn, but I couldn't get in to film it at this point. I do come back later and do a bit more of a close up of um, the yarn. Um, I'm not really sure why I didn't get in there and do it at this point. It's a bit strange. Um, there's also, she does mud bags and um, other tote bags and things. So yeah, it's a really good shop. I think she's on Etsy. Um, yeah, this is the sock that, the sock pattern that Emma ended up buying. So yeah, that was Dina Home of Craft. And then um, Dalton Border Leicester Yarns was next door. Um, <laughs> this is a weird one because the lady kind of like um, came over and started telling Emma that she shouldn't be wearing a shawl and should wear this shrug instead. <laughs> so, so it was kind of a little bit of a, of a weird one. We kind of didn't go back there because... Um, yeah, she kind of uh, she kind of accosted us. <laughs> it was all a bit strange. So yeah, sorry, Dalton Border Leicester Yarns. I'm sure you're lovely, um, but your salesperson was a little bit full on for us. She did have fleece and things there. Um, we then went to Nervous Fiber, who is one of my absolute favourites. Charlotte was brilliant. Um, I told her she's a temptress and I told her it's all her fault as I kept slamming down yarn and buying it because, yeah, there's just every single one of them I wanted. It's just so stunning yarn. Yeah, I love I love Nervous Fibre. I did then cross over to Crystal Rose Designs, which is a new to me shop. Um, she had some really, really lovely project bags. Didn't actually buy one, but um, there was a few that we had our eye on. But again, this is the thing, I think, when you're having to go, when you want to go around once without buying anything, you tend to miss things. I don't think I would do that again. I think I would just, well, you can't do that at Yarndale, it's too big anyway, but um, I don't think I would do that um, at this one again. I think I would just buy whenever I wanted to see some, when I, whenever I seen something that I wanted. So yes, Crystal Rose Designs, I do come back here a bit later as well to the other side of her shop. It was kind of split into two. Um, she sold a lot of beads. Um, and there were just like strings of beads that you could buy and do something with and then she did yes then she has like different beads in tubes and things like that and a lovely felted bag she had like I don't know it was like little kits of little things to make she had this lovely little um, I think it's like a scissors case maybe I think there was a pen knife in there or something I can't probably remember what was in there and um, pom-poms and lots of project bags so yeah it wasn't so much yarn in there it was more like like a craft type shop and then we headed over to Baltic Knits which was lots of kits so it was kits of um, mittens and socks mainly There's possibly hats I can't remember, you will see in a minute, but there was loads of different mittens and Emma was wanting to buy a pair of them, but she couldn't decide on a pair and I, I don't think she ended up getting anything in the end um, because I think she was just too overwhelmed with the choice. There were so many different mittens to choose from, um, all colour work and then there's socks just next to it there and socks hanging up to choose from. And then they also did whirls, 
of yarn. And they were big, big old whirls. The lighting's a bit funny here because they were against a window and it kept shining right in. Then we go to Riverside Knitting Wools, who sold dog beds <laughs> um, and big, big balls of yarn that um, Ange kept going around and sniffing because it smelt really sheepy and she likes that. Um, yeah, big, big, massive um, undyed skeins and th I don't even know what you would do with that. <laughs> This is, she's going to sniff this now, because it's blue as well. <laughs> she said, no, it smells really sheepy, I love it, I love it. They also sold um, commercial yarns, and um, they had a bag of bananas hanging up, which uh, everyone was saying was banana yarn. And then they had um, big old chunks of fabric as well. So, yeah. And then next door to River, Riverside Knitting Wools was Hot Butter Yarns. A lot of these are really new to me. Um, Hot Butter Yarns was very colour worky. Um, beautiful, beautiful. Stunning um, Fair Isle jumpers and stranded, stranded knit jumpers. But um, I don't think they saw... I think it was mainly patterns that they sold and hat kits. But again, another one I couldn't get in. Um, and we didn't go back to. We didn't go back to this row at all. There's the kits down there and then the patterns up the side. And then we went to Flora Fibres, which actually has the banana yarn. <laughs> so, so we were all laughing because we, we just literally walked two stalls down and found the banana yarn. So Flora Fibres is all... Um, if I'm thinking correctly, it's yes, yeah, it just says on the label it's all vegan stuff so it's yarns made from denim and cotton and um pima cotton and bananas which i will show you in a minute and i wanted to come back and get some banana yarn and i didn't recycle cotton t-shirt yarn just yeah it's all vegan there's the banana yarn i had my eye on the dark blue one on the left now and I didn't come back. But um, I will. If they're at Yarndale, I have to get some banana yarn. Because I really want to try it. There was then a charity drop-off for magazines. You could just drop off magazines there. And then people were putting money in the little tub for Teresa's Hospice. Um, which is a local charity. And um, yeah, it was just, just magazines there. Then we went to Wensleydale Long Wool. They also did lots and lots of kits and hat kits and yeah, mostly hat kits I think. Was that gloves, headbands, things like that. Um, they did a great little thing where you could tr get some hand dyed fibre for 10 pence a gram which would be ideal. I should have got some of that to try because I have a drop spindle that I've never ever used. Purely because I don't want to fork out for a whole uh, I don't even know what they're called plat or whatever and then not like it <laughs> so yeah I should have got some they sold lots of um, commercial yarns and um, I, don't, I don't think there was any hand dyed but they sold patterns and just like tools bits and bobs and I did end up they did the Emma ball bags as well coasters and stuff I did end up getting some wool wash from here um, because it smelt lovely. There, Emma's, Emma's holding it there because she got some too. It smelt really nice and um, and it was really cheap too. So we did get some wool wash. We then went over to Pickle Lily, which um, was lovely, lots of fun. Um, the man told me he didn't want anybody filming and, and then when I looked at his shirt, I said, that's definitely you, isn't it? There's always one. Because he was only joking. He was properly joking. Then he was showing us, demonstrating some of the things that they make. So they do a lot of things for um, kids. The, the um, sewer from uh, 
pick a lily, his wife, she used to be a primary school teacher. So she's got lots of like little things for younger kids, which was really cool. Um, and he was showing us some of them. Uh, and there was also project bags and everything. And she's actually really cheap. You should check her out on Etsy. Um, and then we went to Emma Cross Ceramics, who had some amazing stuff. I have seen Emma, Emma Cross at um, Yarndale before. The dragons on these yarn balls are just stunning. I will show you in a second. He spins it round for me so I can see it properly. And he was lovely. He was getting us to stroke the dragons and things. So there, he spins the bronze dragon, which was absolutely stunning. And then he spins the purple dragon for me. Look at that. Amazing. So good. And, um, and it says everywhere, please touch and please, please, like pick them up and have a look at them like it's not one of them where you've got to be really protective so that's cool um we then went to hooked by design which was all hooking kits um some amazing stuff there my granddad used to do hooking and he had this really big um picture on his wall that was all from hooking i don't know what happened to it after he died though but yeah some gorgeous stuff there from Hooking. I like the little bee in the background and I like the three sheet picture. But I cannot take on another craft. So I moved on and we went to Farm Yarn UK. Um, and they had, I couldn't get in here. They had honey at the back, I could see. And, um, cushions and fabric and some hand dyed there was a couple of hat kits um yeah i think it's all their sheep yarn and things like that so it's all it's all stuff from their farm which is lovely there's a couple of knitted things there to pick up as well and then across from farm yarn uk was the cocoon tree once I move, there we go. So the cocoon tree had some project bags. Um, they were a little bit out of my budget, but they were beautiful, beautiful project bags. And some other little bits and bobs, um, stitch markers and things. Gorgeous. But yeah, way out of my budget. And some cute little pin cushions. Um, we then went to Felt Fusion. It took me a while to get in here, but I did get in. Diane meeting some more friends. So they had lots of like rainbow yarns. And then at the back, there we go. At the back, there's, there's lots of beautiful colors from Felt Fusion. I think Emma got something out of their bargain basket. You see a rummaging in it in a minute. And there's Emma rummaging in the bargain basket. She did get something from there pretty sure there were some beautiful colours so much to choose from and now when I look I'm like why didn't I get that and why didn't I get that and why didn't I get that one sometimes when you're behind the camera you don't really see and then we were at Little Gem Felts, where she was finishing off this beautiful picture. She's a very, very talented lady. Um, she made some stunning vases and little trinkets and things, and then all these gorgeous um, pictures that were felted. That was the one she'd finished, which was sheep in the landscape. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, there was bags and books and, yeah, necklaces, everything. It was all felted. Some absolutely stunning work it was kits but we were all saying there's no way our kits would look like hers it would just be a big mashed mess so yeah and I know it's practice but again cannot take on another craft <laughs> just do not have the space or the time there's the kits so the next place we went to was a macrame place um, oh, there, Kiln and Craft. Um, I wrote down that it was called Why Not Macrame. 
So kiln and craft, and they had some, look at that, macrame. Um, yeah, they had some really, really beautiful things. I didn't realise how much you could actually do with macrame, so that was gorgeous. And then we went to Al Allium Threads, which is very pastely and beautiful, beautiful yarns. And then Woolabaloo, I was looking at the plastic bags because I remember as a kid I had one of them jelly bags and the jelly shoes and I used to love them and uh, I hadn't seen them in years so the fact that she had all these jelly bags was proper cute and some beautiful stitch markers and yeah just gorgeous things from Woolabaloo so she's a shop that's near us too, she's just online at the minute. And then we went across to Cool Woolings, who is super bright neon. My camera could not handle <laughs> her super bright neons. You can see them a little bit better when I go under the counter. But yeah, they're like really, really bright and my camera was just dying. <laughs> um, Angela Gardner is next, who had some amazing shawls on the wall. Um... That was a BFL silk mix and it was really shiny and beautiful. And then these shawls, there were geode shawls, so there was like gaps in them. And they were just amazing. Absolutely amazing. You can see that big grey and white one at the back, grey and black one. With the holes in it. It's just so fascinating. I loved that. Um... We then went to the crochet chain. So this was all crochet. Um, I didn't really stick around. I could not get in. This was literally all I could see. Um, she was absolutely packed there. And we then went back to Crystal Rose Designs. This is the other side of the Crystal Rose Design shop. So if you remember, she sold a lot of beads and project bags and things. It wasn't really yarn. So this was all like the uh, findings, jewellery findings and more beads and um, just bits and bobs to make your own stuff. So that was really cool. Alnick Wa Yarn Company had um, some sock made out of sock, no. They did West Yorkshire Spinner's sock yarn, but they had these that were made out of plastic bottles and they were so soft and lovely. It was really, really nice. So I would be interested in, in using some of that at some point. I, was, I liked the black. It was really shiny and just, it, it was lovely. Made out of plastic bottles. Who would have thought it? Um, they sold a lot of commercial yarns. Like I said, the West Yorkshire Spinners was there. There was needles and um, some lovely big project bags. Um, one said make make sleep repeat and the other one just said wool right across the front and yeah there was they did the james brett Mar marble and the batik swirls and then next door to them was mammy and flory which is another new to me shop um beautiful beautiful yarn like i said when they're in cages like that i tend to not really look that well i like them hanging up where i can see them better but they had these big ball cage things and we were asking her what they were and there you should see a flash of hers quickly it's like it's hung around her arm and her, her yarn is in it while she knits and they were really cool never seen anything like that before so they're kind of like a cage of a, of a um, project bag next to Mammy and Flory was Hawkshaw Sheep which I've seen before and that's all natural yarn it's not dyed it's just straight from the sheep or the alpaca so it's, you get the natural colors which is lovely it was quite dark down this part of the venue i'm afraid so the lighting isn't great um so that was hawkshaw sheep and then we were at adelaide walker so this is adelaide walker and um, she had lots of Lots of lovely colours and very, very soft, silky things that we were stroking. And yeah, uh, fibre to spin. Lots of spinning 
stuff Adelaide Walker um, and threads and things so I didn't have a proper good look um, it was beautiful and then after Adelaide Walker we went to the knitting gift shop so the knitting gift shop we've been um, I've seen this shop a few times, it's pretty much at every single yarn shop I've been to. It is a local, well, not that local, but it's it's not too far from us, really. Um, and they sell lots of beautiful yarns, but mostly it's like kits and um, like just bits and bobs, patterns, uh, tools and all that kind of thing, really. Um, they sell like obviously yarn balls, kits for gloves. Um, they sell like little kits for little purses. Like it's all cute little stuff. And um, it's also where I had that um, circular cable needle. If you remember that I lost and then found while I was recording the video, there they are. That's where I had that from originally. Um, I've had that a year now, over a year, and they had Christmas things out. <laughs> So yeah, that was the knitting gift shop. So then we went across to Bellica Yarns. So Bellica Yarns had some beautiful, I'd never heard of Bellica Yarns before. They had some beautiful project bags and some stunning yarn. Um, it was also the most fun I had at the yarn show and I will explain why in a second. So um, these are all her project bags. There was zip or draw skin, string, and then there was the gumball machine. So the gumball machine, you basically, you paid £3, got a token, put it in, and you got something out of the gumball machine that was worth around about £3, uh, £4, sorry. Um, so it was kind of like the best lucky dip ever, and uh, we had lots of fun. I will show you that in a second, but then we, I'll just show you her yarn, because her yarn was stunning, and I had a few things from her bargain bucket, but... Just looking at them again now, I just want to go back and buy some more yarn from her because it was absolutely gorgeous. And yeah, I'd never heard of her before. She um, doesn't do a lot of yarn shows, she says, um, but she's going to go back to that one next year. So here is the gumball machine. This is the token and this is Diane having her first go and I'm going to put the sound on for it. Oh, I've got a rim sheet. Uh, you got a pin back on tomorrow. Oh, are you going? Go on, I'm filming. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a good idea. It's a bit of fun. Yeah. yeah. It's a brilliant idea. What have you got? Oh, I can't see. I need to open. You got can a pin as well? Talking. Oh, you can. Thank you, lovely. Thank you. <gasps> oh, nice. Oh, nice. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Right, hang on. Oh, it's gorgeous. <laughs> They weren't made for you, but I've got your name written all over them. Oh, what did I get? Oh, I've got some sheep. Yeah. Oh, some point protectors. And yeah, some and pins. some, and some yeah, <laughs> bulb ones. Oh, oh, oh it looks like another pin. Oh, I've got a pin. Pinch it either side. And it should, yes, it it either side. <laughs> She's getting in. I'm getting there. Oh, I've got a pin and some stitch markers. Knit happens. Oh, All the same as mine. <laughs> so there you go. Great fun. We went back there twice. Um, and then in her bargain bucket, um, yeah, we had, I got a couple of bits out of her bargain bucket. I think I got one the first time and then I went back and got something else the second time. Or so just, yeah really enjoyed by the yarns it was a lot of fun and um i think a few of us got some bits and bobs from her bargain buckets and we all loved the gumball machine kept sending people around to the gumball machine then we went to ducky darlings um ducky darlings has some absolutely gorgeous yarns still never bought from them i don't know why i don't know what it is it's like as if nothing properly jumps out at me when I'm there but when I see it online I want it so I don't I don't really know but I still haven't bought from Ducky Darlings and I really need to one day one day I will but they have some beautiful colours the show was quiet and down a little bit at this point so it was a little bit easier to film 
I did get a lot of people just walking in front of me. And like I, uh, I do explain this at the end, I don't expect people to move out of my way at all. But I do kind of like want people to be a little bit aware and there just there was no awareness at this yarn show at all people just kept bashing into me and moving in front of me and so it was really difficult to film properly um but yeah we then went to blots natural dyes which he explained to me um all the colors and the little skeins there are what the natural dye ingredients turn into so he had like the names tallied up so you could see what sort of color you would get from each dye um like obviously like there'd be ward there and then the ward would be blue and i don't know just I, I don't naturally dye so snuggly stars yarns was next um this is one of emma's favorites i do love snuggly stars um she had an amazing dress on if you can see it in the corner there it was like all um, monster feet and she had she has some really pretty colors she goes from one end to the other so she's pastely but she also has like really bright rainbows as well and um yeah she had some lush stuff i did end up getting something from her um i think emma did too emma absolutely loves snuggly stars yarns and there's always postcards and badges and tools and things with her as well so yeah she's always a good one and then we went for something to eat and we found these i mean look at them look at them chandeliers amazing very posh we went upstairs um to have a look around and there was more stalls upstairs so the first one it was a lot quieter up here so it was a little bit easier the first one we got to was we county yarns and these were like kits again, colour work kits, but like they had lots of like tiny, tiny little balls of yarn. You'll see in a minute because Diane picks one up to make a frog. She's going to make a frog and she was looking for a frog colour. So they had lots of patterns and things. These in the little buckets were these little tiny balls of yarn to buy and each one had like their knitted colour wrapped around the bucket. Um, so you could buy them in packs, but then you'll see in a minute, Diane will pick one up for a frog. There we go. So they're really little. I think there must be like 10 gram balls. And then she also had the mini scheme plaits and lots of needles and things. So this was a nice little shop. Lots and lots of lovely mini schemes. All the colours. And lots of kits. And then next to them was All's Wool that Ends Wool, which I've seen before. So they did lots of beads. Um, All's Wool that Ends Wool, I always think it's really rainbow. It's very, very bright colours. Um, lots of needles and things and stitch markers and stuff. Buttons is next to that. And the yarn cake cosies which I still don't own. I need to get one of them or knit, knit, knit one, I think. Whirls and rainbows. See what I mean? Rainbow, rainbow, rainbow. That's what I think of when I think of all's wool that ends wool. It's just rainbow. I really liked the pastel one. <laughs> I do like rainbow. But I think I'm a bit more muted colours. And then they did gobstopper balls, which Ange was looking at. I don't think she got one though. She was talking about getting one, but I don't think she got one. And more rainbows, beautiful, beautiful rainbows. So they do do some pastel. So there is something for me. Not that I like pastel, I just, I don't know. I'm not really into the bright reds and oranges and things. But yeah, I do. It's it's a good shop. I do like it there. Um, and then Maggie and me, where the poor guy, I hadn't noticed while I was filming, was trying to eat his dinner, his lunch. But um, yeah, we had, they had kits again. So many kits this year. Um, 
I'd never heard of Maggie and Me either. Uh, macrame and stuff. And then probably yarn, which I thought was a brilliant bag because it's very accurate. And then we went to the Dye Shack. Um, so many beautiful colours. Um, yeah, I just, I was, when I got to here, I was kind of like really focused on finding the colour for my um, Volturi Palace socks. That cream, the ever elusive cream I really wanted. So I kind of wasn't focused on anything else. But when I look now, I'm like, oh, look at all them gorgeous colours. And um, and these guys were back in the bag and basket, bas basket, basket, um, having another rummage. And then this one next door, I do not know what it's called. Me and Diane were looking at this shawl. She had lots of patterns around, but we couldn't find the pattern for that particular shawl. I don't know what it was. And I also didn't find out the name of the shop, which was quite sad because she had some beautiful colours and beautiful patterns there. Um, but yeah, we just we didn't find out what what it was called i'm not really sure why and the upstairs ones were a later edition so not on the program you're back in a bargain book no i'm not i'm not i'm not looking at the bargain book she's a bad influence <laughs> a bad influence i'll be honest i wouldn't buy half the stuff i buy if it wasn't for them guys um <laughs> we then went to isla ceramics um, this was Lucy Locketland, the lady who runs Lucy Locketland, Lucy, this is her daughter um, and she is a ceramicist, she had some gorgeous stuff and then across to Eden Cottage Yarns who is really pastely and beautiful and yeah so many beautiful beautiful yarns, um, I do have an Eden Cottage yarn already in my stash but it was that weird um, line yarns on top of each other thing again and I just I just don't like to rummage I don't know what it is I don't like to start pulling things out in case I make a mess I think so I don't get to really see when they're laid out like that um, and so I didn't get anything from Eden Cottage Yarns and I really would normally want to I really loved these little balls I said to I said to the girls what are these and Anne said balls but they're actually called yarn lins and um, I think they were just little 10 gram balls of yarn to make like little crochet squares and things like that with so cute um we then went to sheep on mars sheep on mars was dangerous she had a whole rack and table that was 10 pound a skein um we lost diane for about 10 minutes to this stall <laughs> I think she bought two, maybe three. Um, I'm not 100%. I didn't because they were all a little bit too variegated for me, but it was a very dangerous rack, 100%. There were some really pretty ones. Um, and then she had some mulberry silk and, oh, it was lovely at Sheep on Mars. Gorgeous, gorgeous colours and gorgeous shawls all knitted up and everything. We then went to Natural Yarn Dyers, who was, like you say, exactly what I say on the tin. It was Natural da Yarn Dyers. It was super soft. Some of it was absolutely stunning. The one that I stroke is Cobweb Yarn. Um, so really, really thin, but it was really soft. It was gorgeous. And they were all dyed with natural, natural ingredients. Um, and then it was happy crochet time. I wondered what was going on because there was a big crowd gathered around these buckets and it was all the acrylic stuff. But obviously there's a place for everybody there. Um, and yeah, it was really busy around this one. They were selling mugs and project bags and wind spinners, just tools and things like that. So yeah, I think Ange bought a mug from here and Emma bought a whirl. The worlds were super, super cheap. I think they were ten pound, and um, you see it in a bit. There's some of the mugs that they were selling. And I said I needed to be in that one, the, the Untidy Crafters Club or something. It said I can't remember. Here's the worlds, and Emma ended up buying one of them. Um, this place, I don't know what it was called. Again, it was an added addition upstairs. And um, 
yeah they didn't they didn't list them on the program so i, I don't know and if it, it didn't have a name up i didn't know what they were but they were basically all toy kits then we were at woo, woo sheeps i was laughing because that yarn has a funny name um <laughs> I couldn't get in here apart from just that yarn at the edge. Um, yeah, there you go. You can see it properly now. <laughs> but that was all I could really see. And then we headed along to Anfield Farm after Woo Sheeps. Oh, I've got to film some of the stitch markers, look. And the project bags. But Anfield Farm, he told us that um, he had like a video of um, some goats um coming up and he said they were all his mohair goats and it was all mohair yarn they're the goats in the pictures there so you could see them and he said that that's all the yarn that you see has come from those goats so that was cute and you could see them and then we went to thread of life which was kind of just like a tool shop um there was just tools for days there um, there was a lot of shops like that at this place, to be fair. I, cu I couldn't get into this one. Um, I really struggled to film any of the sections. There was people just stood chatting at them and everything, and you just you just couldn't get in. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was Thread of Life, and then we went to Frankie and Sydney, which was a needle felt in shop. Another one that I really couldn't get into much of I saw bits and bobs of it um I mean needle felting isn't my thing anyway so it didn't matter too much to me but um it's just it's nice to see everything and you sometimes you really really can't I, I got to this counter it shows you some of the lovely art and the kits that they were selling out of the needle felting which was lovely um but yeah all the pictures and then I love the little sign that he had and then they did like 3D needle felt in I don't know I like that reindeer and then it was knitting for fun which is just needles um she just has racks and racks of different needles so there was all the uh, knit pro and knit as pride if you're in the US um she had the uh I can't remember what it's called is it harmony or so the new stuff there was tips and everything symphonies which i was against i wasn't getting symphonies because all of mine have snapped um i'm obviously a bit just a bit too rough uh there was straight there was tips there was fixed there was fixed circulars um yeah crochet hooks everything you name it she had it i ended up getting a couple of knit pro fixed circulars from there and then Emma's showing me her whirl <laughs> um, and then we went to back to Dina's home of craft so now you get to see the yarn so we were on our second route around now um, and I was just basically filming bits that I'd missed um, so Dina's home of craft gorgeous gorgeous colours um, I think at this point though I was feeling a bit burnt out we were on like a second go around of some of the shops shops stalls I should call them and it is tiring and you do get overwhelmed with all the colours and I definitely think going with a plan of what you need it for is is a good idea like the ones that just jump out are you brilliant you grab them but going with a plan is also good yeah, because when I look at them now, I'm like, well, I want that, and I want that, why didn't I get it? And I think it's just overwhelm when you're there. So much. And Cuddle Bums, I've bought from Cuddle Bums before. I still have it in a skein, so I refused to buy another one because I was really drawn to it again, and I was like, I'm sure that's the skein I've got at home. So I didn't. Um, I must use it. They have lots of little tins and things, and, um, yeah, they have, like, the mini plat and just yeah lovely lovely rainbows and sparkles I point at that one and say that's the one I've got at home but I don't think it is I think the one I have is lighter <laughs> I don't know 
and then finally wild fi wild field fiber was the last one that i hadn't filmed looking on the program i have missed others that i didn't even get to see um blue fern yarns springs to mind i didn't even know she was there but there we go it's busy and full and very 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 packed full of people hello there we go so that was the walk through the northeast yarn show which it took a lot longer than um and I thought it would on the video, a full hour of walking through there. But there was so much to see and so much to do. It was amazing. Absolutely loved it. Um, and I'm really excited to hear that it's back next year. Because honestly, in the northeast of England, we kind of get abandoned a bit. There's never a lot on. It's, you either have to go to Scotland or you go down further south or whatever. There's never anything really around our area. So to have that is brilliant. It's really, really good for us. So... Um, so yeah, I will show you what I bought because I know that's what you want to see. Um, and if you don't want to see that, then that's all I'm going to do now. So thank you very much for watching, just in case. I know some people don't like seeing acquisitions and stuff. So if you don't like that, thank you very much. I will see you next time. Um, but if you are here for acquisitions, then I will show you. So the first, we did intend to go around the show once without buying anything. No. There was far too many bargain buckets and the problem with a bargain bucket is you think well if i leave that it might not be there when i come back so you end up buying it so the first thing i bought was from a bargain bucket it was from wool mouse it's gonna crinkle but it was this set of three um the amarino single i don't know if it's got a color wear on it the girls did ice icy blast um so it's this gorgeous icy blue color it's merino single so it's 100 percent merino but it's 400 meters per 100 grams and it cost me 21 pounds for the three which is insane they should normally be 17.50 each just for uh context um yeah, absolute bargain, £21. So I could not walk away from that. So I got those. I'm going to put them down because they're the most crinkly thing. Um, then on the first scoop past Nervous Fibre, I couldn't resist. Um, so I ended up buying salt from Nervous Fibre. So I've wanted salt since she first brought it out. And I kept going, no, you're not allowed to buy any yarn. You're not allowed to buy any yarn. But then when I seen it, um, last Saturday I was like nope it's mine so this is salt absolutely gorgeous colour wear um, so 75% merino 25% nylon fingering weight 425 metres that's her label her yarn is to die for Anyway, it's basically a girl carrying lots of yarn. Um, I went back later and also got this from Nervous Fibre. So um, this is Ha, H-A-A-R, which I was told is the mist blowing in off the sea, I think. I think that's what Diane told me. I can't really remember. I'll, I'll tell you below if it is. I'll have to look it up. So this was bought with purpose. So if you watch my regular podcast, I was knitting the Volto Volturi Palace socks. I keep calling them the Volturi socks. They're the Volturi Palace socks. Um, and if you remember, if you saw, I'd cast them on with the um, <clears throat> their toe up socks and I'd cast on the contrasting colour and then as I started working with the main colour it felt too soft and when I looked I'd actually accidentally bought 100% merino which is no good for socks so um, I needed a replacement this is, this is a little bit darker than I intended and than I wanted but this is the contrasting colour and I just thought they would be very pretty so the, that was bought in in particular for the Volturi 
Palace socks. So that's going to be caked up very soon and they'll be cast back on. Well, I've got the toe. I just need to start the main bits. So they're going to be on the needles. That one's going to be on the needles very soon. Um, also, see, I did go with purpose this time. Normally, I just go and just go, I want that, I want that, I want that. And I have no, like, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. But this time, I did take yarn with me to match up because I wanted the Volturi Palace socks main colour, which I got. Um, I'm sorry if you can hear banging and stuff. Uh, the kids are off school. It's been quite difficult um, to get this recorded. I've told them they have to stay upstairs and be quiet, but they, they don't know how to be quiet. Um, so yeah, I took some yarn with me because um, for my Make 9, I've got the exploration station in there. And if you watch my Make 9 video, I only had these two to do exploration station. So this is Buttery Biscuit Base from Adventures in Yarncraft. And then this one is just a random skein from Jess at Skein and the Stitch, just from her like Lucky Dip box. Um, so I had those two already and I, I took them with me to North East Yarn Show to find something to match. So the first thing I found was this from Bellica Yarns, which is, I don't think it has a colourway. So it's possibly a lucky dip box, the same as this one from Jess is. Um, this was in their bag and bucket. So I thought that there would go nice. I don't know where it's going to go or anything, but... Um, I also, for the exploration station, got this grey. This is from Snuggly Star Yarns. It's Miss Lavender Grey. I didn't want my exploration station to go too dark. So, I got those. So that's my exploration station. Another bargain basket from Bellica Yarns. I'd never heard of Bellica Yarns before and I, I, I had the most fun round at her stall, which I'll explain in a minute. This also doesn't have a colour wear, but it's this. Gorgeous blues and purples. Yeah, Snuggly Stars yarns, Bellica yarns, and Bellica yarns again. Um, definitely look them. Look at those guys. So Bellica yarns. Um, she had a gumball machine. I can't remember what she said it was called now. Something like Buster or something. Um, so this gumball machine, which I've showed you already in the. Uh, if you walked through the yarn show, um, you paid three pound. You got a token. You put the token in, and anything in the gumball machine that come out was worth four pound, or um, a little bit more. And um, so my first go on the gumball machine, it was so much fun. Honestly, it's ridiculous how much fun that gumball machine was. You get this little little thing, and um, I ended up with some um, colourful bulb stitch markers there we go and I got these little sheep needle stoppers there you go so cute so that was my first go but Bellica was I think it's Laura at Bellica Yarns I'm not 100% on that though don't hold me to it it's the first time I've ever met her um, great fun so i definitely look forward to seeing her at another one another festival um she was right on the entrance as you walked in she was right in front of you um so we went back because that's obviously as you're leaving and we had another go at the gumball <laughs> 
So, and we'd sent loads of people to it as well. You should go and have a go at the gumball machine. So in the second one, I got some um, little jelly, jelly eye ones, which I'm actually not a big fan of. I don't really like those. They tend to stick to my needles. So they annoy me a bit, but some, I think some of them are plastic. Oh, maybe they're not jelly ones. Oh, they're not jelly ones. They're all plastic and they're all different sizes as well. Oh, they're not what I thought, so that's good because I don't like them jelly ones. And I got this um, pin. Hopefully that's four because they're, I'm not 100%. And um, the other girl's got pins that said knit happens on them. I think they've got some needle stoppers, lots of stitch markers. Um, got some really pretty cat, cat ear stitch markers. Um, Ange got the <laughs> stitch holders, you know the long jelly that you stick on your needle and, and feed your stitches through. Those, she got some of those. I also got my only project bag of the day from Bellica Yarns because I couldn't resist it. I just thought that was so pretty. It's got her label on the side. I did not need any more project bags, but then you can never have enough, can you? I got the zip one. You could also get drawstring and toggle. And yeah, there's no pockets or anything. It's just a basic sock bag, really, but um, or a shawl bag. You could probably fit a little one skin shawl in there. Beautiful. This is it compared to the size of my head. Yeah. And I also ended up getting some wool wash from Wednesday Day Long Wool. Um, because I'm running out of celebration. Um, what's it called? Soak. Soak celebration is what I normally use. And I'm running out. That reminds me of soap from when I was a kid. I don't know what, I don't know what the scent is. Does it say? No, it's really nice. Um, yeah, I'm running out with soak and this was literally £5.50. It was so cheap and that's a decent sized bottle. So, um, so I couldn't resist that. Got that. And I got some new needles just because I didn't actually really need them. It was kind of like the other day I was looking for 25 millimetre and they were all used up. And I was like, oh. So I just got some more 25 millimetre, which is these ones. And the zing, um, 80, 80 millimetre, 80 centimetres long, sorry, 2.5 millimetre, which is a US, doesn't say on there, can't remember, I'll pop it on the screen. And then I also just got another 2.25 because I used to have about 10,000 2.25 and most of them were wooden and all of them snapped. Um, so I'm done with my wooden escapades, I'm not going back there, I'm sticking to metal and uh, and I'm going to build up my 2.25 collection again because I think I only have two now, three now. So yeah, so I've just got a couple of needles and then I also got these because I've never owned any. So it's the stitch fixers, you're on like a little key ring. So I'm going to hang those on project bags um, so I know where they are. There's a big one, a skinny one and a medium one. So yeah, just to, to fix drop stitches because I'm always like faffing with the two needles. So that's handy. And that was it. That's everything I bought. Um, so I've just finished editing the video and realised that I completely forgot to say how nice it was to meet up with Devine and Fiona. Now I know Devine watches the podcast and Fiona said she's going to start. I'm holding you to it. Um, but yeah, it was really, really nice to meet up with them. The Devine was in, is in my Discord and um, she'd come down from Scotland to the yarn show. So when she knew we were going, we decided to meet up and we did meet her a couple of times. So I'm going to pop the photo in the end of the video so you can see that um 
because I don't know why I've, I've just it's just gone out of my head that I've got this photo and that I met up with even more lovely people it's been quite hectic leave me alone anyway lovely to meet you Devine I hope we can do it again and Fiona too if you are watching it was really really nice to meet you and um yeah I will I will pop that photo at the very end so um I'll be back next week with a regular podcast and um sorry this was extra extra long but there was a lot to show you so yeah thank you very much for watching um, if this is your first time visiting my channel, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below. And um, if you like it and you want to come back, click the subscribe button for me. And, um, and I will see you in the next one. But yeah, see you later. Have a lovely rest of your day. Bye. <laughs>